Hey everyone, the name's Eric Dor, and in today's video I'd like to talk about secrecy and I will talk about the value of secrecy and why we need it. I think that there is nothing inherently wrong with surveillance in itself, but there is nothing wrong with secrecy either. Uh, people should have the choice to decide to be private when they need to, because there are benefits to this. I find that when we are connected to other people and when we are sharing with other people and when we are open with everyone about everything, we tend to enter into some kind of a global mass social consciousness. Often we begin to think things that we wouldn't if we were alone. We begin to feel things we wouldn't if we were alone. We begin to express values that we wouldn't have if we were alone. Often it's all it takes is that you have a group of four or more people to start getting into this consciousness where really everything you do is a reflection of what the group wants and what the group thinks. Uh, everyone has the ability to enter into this group consciousness. But, and it has its benefits and it has its disadvantages. Obviously the key biggest disadvantage to group consciousness is creativity. When you are in a group like this, often creativity tends to go down the drain because often you can't share ideas. Uh, eventually, ideas start to clog up and you can only have like one or two dominant ideas in a group at the same time. I find that uh, also people stop thinking more independently in groups. Uh, we start disregarding our own opinion because we think maybe the group already knows this or maybe I'm stupid or maybe it doesn't matter or maybe nobody cares. And partially this can be fixed by self-confidence and self-esteem of course. But on another degree, secrecy provides a kind of uh, space where you can think thoughts that you wouldn't have if you felt watched by others. When you feel watched by others, you perform differently, your behavior changes. You start acting like you think other people would want you to act. You start acting like you think it's appropriate in a uh, situation like this when watched. Uh, perhaps you start moving in a way that uh, seems more lawful or perhaps uh, you start acting um, in a more honest and legal way. Perhaps you uh, only cross when there's a green light when you see a cop car around you. Sometimes this is good, it promotes safety, it promotes security, stability. Uh, and so many good things. Um, really, if you think about it, there are tons of positive advantages to being watched. But also, there are advantages to being creative. To being free, to making your own choices, to following your own path, to having your own sense of direction in life. To be able to decide for yourself what you find important. And to have the time, if you want to, to keep exploring something in the private before you share it with others. Often people find that people who share their ideas with others are less likely to succeed with these ideas. And why? I think because when we start sharing ideas with others, we become less, more self-conscious about the idea and we become less creative. Often it's easy to feel discouraged if other people aren't responding in a certain way or even if they are positive about it. Uh, your idea starts to feel limited because you told other people you would do a certain thing and as we all know with the creative process you often set out to do thing, one thing but end up somewhere completely different. Often with the creative process you need to have this path that is more multi-turned and if you try to make it linear often what ends up happening is nothing happens at all. Their uh, project falls, it won't succeed because that linear part that you set out in the beginning wouldn't, wouldn't work. Often we need to be open and flexible in this matter, but I find with creativity it's easy to feel judged and more sensitive. Because we feel judged when we uh, jump off in a direction that was different from what we told others in the beginning. We feel... Um, Sensitive when other people judge our new ideas, our babies, before we have had a chance to develop them fully. We feel limited and constrained when we have um, become dependent on other people and when um, our ideas have been shared with others. It's crazy how it works, but I think this taste, uh, tells you something about what it means to be intuitive as well. Intuitives... Uh, why do you think you need privacy? ENFPs and ENTPs, why do you think you need privacy? Well, 
you need privacy just as much as the INFJs and INTJs. Because for you, just as the INFJ and the INTJ, it creates this space where you can think and fill the world with whatever you want to. In dark spaces, in hidden rooms, in places that nobody else has seen, in areas where nobody watches you and when you feel completely free, you become and you access your intuition on a level that you wouldn't have been able to before. So it's often worth thinking about this when you're about to make a big decision. Perhaps take that time to yourself. Perhaps go into the forest. Perhaps go into your own room and sit in your bed and think where nobody watches you. Perhaps write a journal where that nobody else can read. Perhaps do something that is yours, your baby, your own thing. Um, not even with the intention of showing other people. You don't have to show everything you write to other people. It's completely fine to keep things hidden. And uh, I find that uh, this is also something a lot of writers, artists, thinkers, intuitives, philosophers realize that when you share your work, you become, and uh, your work transforms itself. You have all these things you do by yourself that you don't care about, but when you're about to show it to other people, suddenly you start to care so much more. If somebody brings up your journal and asks if they can read it and you go, uh, sure, suddenly you become so self-conscious about how you write it, your style, and everything. When you start blogging, it's a totally different thing to vlog for an audience than to vlog for yourself. It's a totally different thing to write a blog that's your own, private, or only shared with a few friends, than to have something you share with the entire world. And so, imagine we're sitting in this world where everything we do is shared on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Okay, not everything, but a lot of things we do share with other people. And that creates like two versions of ourselves. And the hidden version of ourselves, the things we don't share, reflect that part of ourselves that is our own, completely our own. That we can do whatever we want to it. That uh, has, is full of potential. That we can become anything, that could possibly do anything, that can go in any potential direction at any moment. And that this us that we show to the world is a world uh, is a is an us constrained by so many different factors. Who is my viewership group? What do people tend to like? What do people people tend to share? Uh, what uh, is the common uh, practices that I've absorbed that other people tend to follow on Instagram and posting images? What's appropriate? What's not appropriate? There's. Different levels of this, of course, and I think that INFJs and ENFPs pursue privacy in different ways. INFJs, I find, uh, will often uh, find themselves more stressed by social media in the sense that uh, all the messages, all the constant uh, grabs for attention, all the things you need to constantly respond to, that phone that keeps popping up messages. Um, but for uh, ENFPs and ENTPs, I think me time is like uh, it's like a need in a sense. In a sense, it's like you can feel like this uh, beam that pulls you. Oh, I want to go off there and sit there and read. Oh, I want to uh, go away for a while and just be, and I want to just uh, take a moment to sit with, uh, or I want to sit just with my friend and I don't want to meet anyone else. It's that. Uh, um, it, it actually works to be alone with other people. And I find that I think a lot of ENFPs and ENTPs have this philosophy of wanting to be alone with someone. Um, it ideally someone who doesn't judge your work, who doesn't make you feel self-conscious, who doesn't make you care about your delivery style or how you do something or how you say something. Because that's what ruins it. It's that sense that you feel uh, watched by others and uh, if you can manage that with one two, or two, maybe even two or three people, that's amazing. Um, it speaks to how good of a group you built and what, how you built the group. It also speaks to why we should have one-on-one -on -one conversations with other people. Because often at a party, how do you bring up topics that you are discussing and thinking about in a uh, way that is true to you and how you feel compared to when talking to just one person? How do you manage um, talking to a complete stranger compared to 
uh, talking to someone that you know and trust. There are so many things to think about when it comes to secrecy versus uh, surveillance and I find that uh, any person who tends to value privacy highly tends to also value creativity and freedom highly. I don't think I met a person who says they value freedom and who speaks a lot about freedom and who doesn't like privacy, who doesn't like to be alone. Usually these two topics are completely interrelated. So think about this and think about how you can use privacy to maximize your intuition. That's all for now. I hope you enjoyed this video and as always, may your neurons be with you.